If you're looking for an upgrade or you're building a new system, you'll find a ton of choices for your next CPU. To help you choose, I've compiled CPU data from Nano Review, Hardware Unboxed, and Tom's Hardware. In this video, I'll be presenting my analysis and giving you recommendations at each performance tier for the lowest price. After analyzing CPUs released by Intel and AMD in the last 5 years, I've found 3 main takeaways. Takeaway number 1. New is better and cheaper than old. Using prices from PC Part Picker, we can see that older CPUs aren't much cheaper despite having worse performance. For example, the 9900K from 2018 is inferior to the 12600K from 2021 and is double the price. Therefore, I recommend only considering CPUs from the newest two generations. If you're on a tight budget, going for a newer, lower tier model is usually a better option than an older, higher tier model. Takeaway number two, gaming still loves single core performance. As much as we all love multi-core performance, gaming performance is still much more strongly correlated with single core performance. You might be wondering, if that's true, then how come the higher tier i9 and Ryzen 9 CPUs, which have a ton of cores, usually have the best gaming performance in their generation? That's because the higher tier models have higher clock speeds and, more importantly, have larger caches. The importance of CPU cache size can be demonstrated with the 5800X3D. Despite having lackluster single core performance, the 5800X3D punches well above its weight in gaming performance thanks to its massive cache. However, Linus Tech Tips found that when upgrading from a 3090Ti to a 4090, a setup with the 5800X3D didn't gain much in gaming performance, whereas setups using AMD Zen 4 saw significant improvements. In summary, if you're mainly using your PC for gaming, you should pay more attention to CPU single core performance and cache size. You're not really future-proofing by going with an i9 or Ryzen 9, since the next generation's i5 or Ryzen 5 will likely match or even beat it in gaming performance. Takeaway number 3. Component pairing is crucial. The pattern I've noticed in these benchmarks is that the quality of other components besides the CPU can significantly influence performance. This means that when you're deciding what CPU to buy, you can't look at the cost of the CPU by itself. A faster CPU will likely need a more premium motherboard and high-end RAM to maximize its performance. The total cost will be much higher compared to a slower CPU that can manage with a basic motherboard and average RAM. So for my CPU recommendations, I've also included RAM and motherboard pairings that should go well with the performance tier. You definitely don't need to go with exactly what I'm recommending, but you should aim to get similar specs when choosing your parts. With that, let's get into my recommendations. For a budget build, I recommend the Ryzen 5 5600G. The 5600G is one of the most affordable CPUs with modern grade performance. It also comes with integrated graphics, which is super helpful if your GPU hasn't arrived yet or needs to be fixed. You can pair it with a basic B550 motherboard, which should support Ryzen 5000 series right out of the box. Even for budget builds, I wouldn't recommend spending less than 100 bucks on the motherboard, as the build quality and feature set will be very lacking. You can top off the build with a decent DDR4 kit. 16GB of 3200MHz CL16 will do just fine in gaming and regular computer tasks. Alternatives at this price point include the Ryzen 5 5500 and the Core i3 12100. The 5500 is cheaper but overall slower and lacks integrated graphics, while the 12100 is comparable in price but trades multi-core performance for single-core performance. Now, upping the budget a bit, I have a solid entry-level recommendation, the Core i5-12400. This CPU will give you solid performance at a great value. It's a solid step up from the 5600G and comes with a CPU cooler. I've also bumped up the motherboard and RAM just a touch to keep up with the i5. You can reduce the total cost by downgrading these, but keep in mind you might be skipping out on features like built-in Wi-Fi and BIOS flashback. Moving to the mid-range, if you're building a system focused on gaming, the Ryzen 5 7600X is for you. This CPU delivers top-tier gaming performance and is currently the most affordable latest generation CPU. At this performance tier, I'm starting to look for motherboards with better build quality and power delivery that can keep up with a beefier CPU. I've also upped the RAM from DDR4 to DDR5. Most third-party benchmarks were done with fairly fast DDR5 kits, so if you want to get comparable performance, I would avoid going much slower than 6000MHz CL36. Staying in the mid-range, if you're planning on using your system for productivity, I recommend the Core i5-13600K. 
Compared to the 7600X, the 13600K is slightly worse in gaming, but much better in multi-core performance, which makes it great for productivity workloads. However, it will cost a good chunk more than the 7600X. I generally recommend using Z-Series motherboards on Intel K suffix models in order to enable proper overclocking. Z-Series motherboards also usually have much better power delivery and thermals than the lower tier chipset motherboards. Moving to the upper range, the Core i7-13700K will give you fantastic performance across the board and, on average, barely edges out the Ryzen 9 7900X, which is similarly priced. Motherboards paired with this performance tier should come with improved build quality and power delivery to promote system stability and cooling. On the other hand, faster DDR5 kits start skyrocketing in price with only minor spec improvements, so I've only bumped up the memory kit slightly. I only recommend this for those who can leverage the productivity performance, since in gaming, this CPU performs similarly to the much cheaper 7600X. However, if you can afford it, I highly recommend moving up a tier to a high-end productivity build using the Ryzen 9 7950X. This CPU will get you comparable productivity performance to the Core i9-13900K while currently costing $50 less. For the motherboard, X670 will have more PCIe lanes and expansion ports, but B650 will be slightly cheaper. Either of these will be fine as long as the board has high quality power delivery and cooling. Again, I only recommend this CPU for those who can leverage the productivity performance. If you are mainly using your system for gaming, but you want the best possible gaming performance no matter the cost, I have one final recommendation, the Core i9-13900K. This CPU currently leads the pack in gaming performance and multi-core performance, but also fetches quite a hefty price. You should pair this CPU with a fairly premium motherboard. I've gone with the MSI MPG Z690 Force as it comes with a fairly chunky 18-phase VRM, which should help with the super high power draw of the 13900K. Now that we've gone through my recommendations, there are two things I'd like to note. Firstly, if you want to keep upgrading every one or two years, Zen 4 and AM5 is the way to go. You'll be able to keep the same motherboard and keep upgrading the CPU for the next several Ryzen generations. Just be sure to get a more premium motherboard so that it lasts through the upgrades. Secondly, a completely new build might not make sense for some of you in terms of value. If you're currently on AM4, I'd recommend upgrading to Ryzen 5000 series if you haven't already. You should be able to reuse your current motherboard with just a BIOS update. If you're currently on Intel with a good DDR4 kit, you can go with Ryzen 5000 series, Intel 12th gen, or Intel 13th gen. These all support DDR4, so you might be able to find some cost savings there. That wraps it up for my 2022 Q4 CPU buying guide. I hope that I was able to help you choose a processor for your next PC build or upgrade. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like or dislike this video and tell me what kind of build you're going for in the comments below. See you next time.